Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. Welcome back to another live stream. In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. We were talking about the, the massive CME that, that surprised everybody, but today we have new information involving the, the humongous CME, colossal CME as we called it, and you know the, the information regarding where it's going, how fast it's uh, moving, and that's the thing surrounding this. What's up, Agent Fletcher? This thing was a record setter. Check this out, guys. We're going to get right to it. I'm going to stay on task. This is going to be a, a quick live stream. Here we go. Yesterday's very large CME was moving at a staggering five, over 5 million, five, over 5 million, 500,000 miles per hour. This is in the top five ever recorded. Are you serious right now? So luckily, it wasn't headed towards the Earth. If it would have, right now, the Earth's magnetic field is kind of struggling a little bit. We're going to talk about that in this video. Uh, wouldn't have been a good time to be taking a, a humongous high-speed CME like that. But nevertheless, it was producing shock waves that were measured once again at 2474 kilometers per second. That comes out to approximately just over 5.5 million miles per hour. And that would be this one right here. Here it comes again off the... The north limb of the sun, the northern uh, northwestern limb of the sun right there. One of the top five fastest ever recorded. You know where it's headed? Right now, it's headed towards Venus. Unbelievable. Guys, don't forget to hit the like button, please. That sends the, the video out further. We're not over here to try to win a popularity contest. We're just trying to get the video pushed out as, as far as we possibly can. I want to touch base on, uh, I just want to give you guys an update on that. Last night, let me show you what I was dealing with. I know some of you guys were, were talking about checking out the, the comet last night. Here's what my northwest sky looked like. Not a chance. You can see I was talking about the, the light pollution. There it is, firsthand. So the comet was right up in there, and it looked something like, uh, here's a photo that was sent in by, by Jeremy. Now, he was using a... A telescope. I'm not sure what type of technique he was using, but there's Comet Atlas. This is in a, a slightly different type of a, a stacking format, but it doesn't necessarily look like a long rod. That's a, a, what they call light drag. But anyway, the comet was up here in the sky, but you can see we had too much light pollution out here in our location. It was right up in here. Obviously not visible. Even with a, a telescope and a pair of binoculars, it it would have been a, a little bit challenging. So I did try. I did go outside and I, after the sun was fully set and was kind of hoping that maybe I could pull it in. If any of you guys had a chance to, to see Comet Lemon last night, send your pictures to reports at MrMBB333.com or come over here to the website and look for this red banner that says, have a large video. It's a Dropbox watch. Just click on it, and you can drag and drop your videos right in there, Kerplunk. And they can even be long, 10-minute videos, 15-minute videos. And I want to thank everybody that's been sending them in. I've got your guys' videos. Uh, Michael, I got your videos this morning. Um, Gordon, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Keep them coming, absolutely. I want to talk about the event that's occurring involving the magnetosphere, okay? You guys are aware that we're, we're dealing and been talking about the ongoing situation down in the South Atlantic with regard to the, the magnetic anomaly above the South Atlantic Ocean, right? You guys are all familiar with that. There is a magnetic anomaly down there with the magnetosphere. Well, there's another one now, not only in the South Atlantic, but apparently in the North Atlantic. Unbelievable. Let me get right to it. I'm not going to keep you guys waiting. You guys know about the massive weak spot down in the Atlantic. How about the, the anomaly up in the North Atlantic? Did you guys hear about that? During the geomagnetic storm on the, the night of October 18th, this was spotted. Check this out. This is wild, okay? A super arc is what they're calling this. And guys, they really don't know exactly what causes this phenomena that you're about to see. Unbelievable. For reasons not yet fully understood, a giant, they're calling it a super arc, was spotted in the night sky on October 18, 2025, spanning over 400 uh, miles, basically from North America to Europe. So it could have been well over 4,000 miles. Obviously, this wasn't seen by one person on the ground. This was spotted from the night sky using, you know, satellites, telescopes, things like that. 
This is part of the, the magnetosphere. This is the electric ring current that surrounds the Earth. For reasons not fully understood, even though we were in the middle of a G2 geomagnetic storm, that's not a very strong geomagnetic storm. This occurred on the night of October 18th during that storm. Sometimes these arcs are visible, but they're very faint and small. This thing here was absolutely titanic. They're calling this a super arc. This is from the, the Boston University Center for Space Physics. There you go. And again, this is just part of it. Not all of it. This is part of it. This was spanning from Boston all the way across the North Atlantic Ocean. So keep in mind, we have the South Atlantic Anomaly. Now we have a North Atlantic Anomaly. How much longer can this go on? This is basically, if you, if you read about it, again, they, they, they come right out and say, it doesn't happen often enough to have enough data to, to fully understand what's going on here. This is very rare, kind of like the, the CME that, that jumped off the sun yesterday. This too was very rare. CMEs don't normally come off the sun at over 5 million miles an hour. That is shocking, and that was quite a shockwave that's headed towards Venus, not the Earth. But this here, oh my gosh, that was seen in the night sky. It was so bright over in Sweden, it was reflecting off of lakes and ponds. And it's usually not that bright. So basically what this boils down to is this. During the geomagnetic storm on the night of October 18th, for whatever reasons, they don't know why, the magnetosphere sprung a leak in the North Atlantic and created this light. It was basically leaking light, obviously some form of gas or something, and created a massive arc. Don't know why. Um... Is it going to happen again? More than likely, it will happen again. Does it have something to do with the, the ongoing massive weak spot down in the South Atlantic Ocean? Hey, what's up, Graham? Thank you for the, the super chat. Magnetic anomalies must be... Ah, very good, Graham. Good point. Thank you for sharing that. It's got to be linked to the inner core of the Earth, right? And if the inner core is slowing down, that's a topic for a whole nother video. But the inner core is, like Graham just said, it is indeed slowing down. So is it creating magnetic anomalies not only in the South Atlantic, but the North Atlantic as well? Kind of looks like it, guys. That's what we're dealing with. And how long can this hold? You know, it makes you wonder. This is uncharted territory. Absolutely uncharted territory. We haven't been down this road. And again, there's not enough data to even make a conclusion. So we don't really fully understand what, what's going on here. Here's a little graph, a diagram showing the, the increase, the fluctuations in the, the magnetosphere. It increases, decreases, increases, decreases. And what's happening down in the South Atlantic is the, the anomaly is moving. Okay, it's getting bigger. So that's probably, if I had to take a guess, that's probably what caused the, the disturbance in the North Atlantic is the, the anomaly down in the South Atlantic. It, it almost has to be related. I don't know how they couldn't be related. So we're seeing super arcs in the North Atlantic. We're seeing CMEs of over 5 million miles an hour. You, you can't make this stuff up. I want to show you guys a, a couple of photos that were sent in uh, by Jeremy Staples, who did an incredible job filming not only uh, comets last night, but he pulled in some galaxies. This here is a, a photo by Jeremy Staples. This is a Messier 8, M8 galaxy right there. Thank you, Jeremy. He also sent in a, a photo of Comet Swan right here. I'm not sure what type of telescope he's got, but he's got some really nice equipment. Then he also sent in this image here of Comet Atlas. This is not the Comet Atlas everybody's been talking about. This is Comet Atlas C2023A3. This is a comet that's exiting the solar system. Um, it's actually been in the solar system a while. It's just nobody's been talking about it. Uh, but this here is on a whole nother level. Over here at spaceweather.com, they were talking about Comet Lemon last night. And Comet Lemon's uh, approach last night was its closest approach it's going to get to the Earth. Now it's moving away from the Earth. So you'll still be able to see it. Um, obviously, we're not going to be able to see it from out here in Arizona. 
unless I drive way out in the country. And then, yeah, probably have a, a pretty decent view of it. And maybe I will. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But they're talking about the, the major far side explosion yesterday off the, the north limb of the sun, the far side of the sun. And they're thinking this come from an old sunspot that just turned away from the Earth. So this thing could have come towards the Earth. This tells us that the, the sun is definitely getting cranked up again. So we're going to see more of this probably in the, in the coming days as we are still in solar maximum. This is supposed to happen, right? Um, absolutely it is. But... Coming off there at speeds like that, this just goes to show you that we don't understand the sun's full capabilities, not by a long shot. We've only been studying the sun for, what, 150 years with, I mean, some sort of sophisticated equipment. We don't know its full potential, guys. I promise you that. This thing could shed a layer tomorrow. Just like this was a surprise. We weren't, really weren't expecting that huge eruption because we couldn't, we couldn't see the sunspot. It's on the backside of the sun. Here's the story about the arcs. The electrical rings just sprung a leak right there. Can't make this stuff up. The electrical rings around the Earth sprung a leak during the geomagnetic storm. Yes, they did. These arcs, this one primary arc, again, was seen from North America all the way over to Europe. Here's the mathematics on the CME real quick before I forget. Converting 2474 kilometers per second, that's how fast the that's how fast CMEs are measured in kilometers per second. Convert that into miles per hour for those of us over here in North America, that comes out to 5,535,072 miles per hour. That is quite a shockwave. Wow. You know how fast that would have got to the earth? Uh, wow, 24 or 5 in <laughs> a day? You serious? Less than a day. Oh, wow. That was moving at the speed of a, of a Carrington event. Are you serious right now? Let's just do the math uh, real quick. Well, just hang in there, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this math real quick. Uh, 93 divided by 5.5 .5 equals. Ah, there you go. There's your answer. 16.9 hours. That's how fast, you know what? That, that's Carrington speed. Oh my gosh. The Carrington event of 1859, the, the CME that was associated with the, the massive solar flare arrived from the, the sun to the earth in less than 16 hours. That one yesterday that we just saw um, was moving at Carrington speed. If, if it were earth directed, it would have arrived here in just over 16 hours. Wow, that's a Carrington ele level event that we just saw yesterday. Carrington level. So who knows what the, the measurements was on the, the, the flare itself. Wow, that was a big deal. When I saw that, and, and, and guys, I keep this going right over here. In fact, I don't know if you can see it or not. Here, we'll just do it. Screw it right there. See that behind me? I don't know if you can see that very good or not. I apologize if you can't. But I keep the Soho's on all the time right there on that desk. And when I looked over there yesterday and I saw that, that humongous CME flying off there, I'm like, what is going on? And my, my, my first, you know, um, questions were, is this thing coming towards the earth? <laughs> you know? Yeah, there it is again. That's a record setter, guys. Five million plus miles an hour. Unbelievable. Thank you for the likes. Keep them going. How many we got? 528. Crank them up, guys. Hit that like button so it'll push the video out there farther. Once again, the, the magnetic shield sprung a leak, um, the Earth's ring current. They don't understand exactly why this does this. Again, it happened during a G2 geomagnetic storm, not a, a G5, you know, or a big, strong storm. It was a, a rather mild storm. So for the, the, the shields to behave like that, it's highly unusual. And it's probably going to happen again. It's a sign of something, okay? Is it a sign of solar maximum? Maybe. Is it a sign like Graham was talking about, the, the inner core slowing down? I'm on board with that theory. Absolutely I am, because they have just verified that the Earth's core is indeed slowing down. And how they determine that is through earthquake seismograph signatures. It's pretty amazing. I've followed seismographs across the, the United States, and you can, you can track different things on those seismographs and not always earthquake energy. You can find other pulses that, that the, these seismographs detect that the earth is feeling 
and they're revealed in the seismograph data. So that's like this thing here with, with the, the electric current around the Earth. There's not enough data to study. So they don't know what's really going on. It's kind of a, it is a new thing, you know. So there's still a lot to learn about the Earth. There's still a lot to learn about the oceans. And obviously, there's still a lot to learn about the sun. We don't have it all figured out yet. We're trying. We've learned a lot. But I don't think, you know, we began to scratch the surface of understanding fully what the sun is capable of doing, number one, because it's always changing. It's constantly changing its ratios of, of hydrogen and helium and things like that. So how can you fully understand something that's in a constant state of flux? You can, you can vaguely kind of understand maybe what it's going to do and not do, but that's about it because it's constantly changing. So anyway, enough of that. Thank you guys for the likes. Well, up to 676, just like that. You guys are good. What's going on, guys? Good to see everybody in the chat. Thanks for spending part of your day with me. It's Wednesday, and it's going to soon be, you guessed it, Friday again. So don't forget, if it's not cloudy in your location, by all means, you can check out Comet Lemon in the northwestern sky. I did look in our skies, but and I've been looking, trust me. Uh, there's just way too much light pollution. But I thought just maybe, just maybe, during the, the close approach event, it might outshine the light pollution? No, nah, not a chance. It would have had to have been a lot closer, like like probably Halley's Comet type of close, you know, and it, and it just simply was not that close. Thanks for hitting the likes, guys. It's still going up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gracias, gracias. Really appreciate that. Um, impossibly whacked out world. What's going on? Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Infinite consciousness. Thank you guys for stopping by. I appreciate that. Where's everybody from today? Where's everybody from? We know the magnetic north. Yeah, the magnetic north is wandering, Graham. You're right. It's been wandering for, for a long time, and that's something else that we don't fully understand. We assume that the, the magnetic poles flip every, what, five, six, seven hundred thousand years. But again, nobody was back here keeping records 700,000 years ago, except the, the soil samples of the Earth and the ice cores. You know, the ice cores tell us a lot. They, they tell a story. Salt Lake City, Utah, Nova Scotia, Cincinnati, Vegas, Wisconsin. What's up, guys? Thank you for dropping your location. Appreciate that. Just, just curious, that's all. Arizona, Hawaii, Southern Maine, Tennessee, Mississippi, Mississippi, Queen, if you know what I mean. Los Angeles in the house. I never get people from Los Angeles. Yay, Los Angeles. Thanks for stopping by. Reno, Fort Wayne, Tim Huntley. What's up, Tim? Out of Missouri. Thank you, Tim, for the super chat yesterday. East Tennessee. Love RKN. Beaufort, South Carolina. That is cool. Thank you, guys. I really do appreciate that. Well, listen, as promised, this is going to be a short live stream, and I'm going to stay true to my word. Um, High-speed CME, record setter probably moving in excess of 5 million miles per hour. Thankfully, that was not coming towards the Earth. And once again, there is a leak in the electric current of the Earth, leaking light or something spotted from North America all the way over to Europe, spanning two hemispheres, the Western Hemisphere, and literally thousands of miles Thank you guys for stopping by and spending part of your day with me. As always, thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.